Let's look at limits and continuity for functions of two variables. Uh, just focusing on a few examples, I'm not going to worry about the explicit definition or talk about how to prove it. That's just not where I'm going with this. Um, but there's some subtleties, and I want to talk about them uh, and how to just how to be aware of them. So let's start with a nice example for contrast with bad examples. It's going to come up in a minute. Um, f of x, y is x squared plus y squared. A nice symmetrical bowl. And the claim is that this is continuous everywhere. And in particular, let's look at the origin, because that's where um, things are going to screw up in our other examples. The limit as x, y go to 0, 0 is equal to 0. So that means that when I put in any point as the input, any x, y, if it's close to 0, 0, if it's close to the origin, the value of the function is very, very close to 0. And you can think of that as a process of picking a bunch of different x, y points that approach the origin. And if that's true, then the value of the function, x squared plus y squared, should also approach 0. Um, the thing is, you don't want to just think about coming in along straight lines, though. You want to think about coming in straight lines, curves, or just a sequence of dit, 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 coming in and coming in close to the origin. That's really essential, as we'll see from the other examples. So let's see what can go wrong with this. Okay. Here's one that's like some of the examples in the book, but it's a, I think it's a little different. I don't think they use this one. Um, x over root x squared plus y squared. Now, like a lot of the examples in the book, there's a better way to see why they would come up with these examples. And I don't think Stuart talks too much about how he comes up with these examples. Um, it's really from polar coordinates. So you can, right off the bat, you can tell you've got a denominator of x root x squared plus y squared. So this function isn't going to be defined at the origin. But maybe we can, maybe it's a removable discontinuity. Maybe we can just define it to be some value and it'll be nice, okay? But in fact, it's much, much worse than that, as you can see from the graph. So how did, how did I come up with this example? Well, I thought about it in polar coordinates. The bottom is just r. The top, x, is r cosine theta. So if you cancel those out, really what this is is the function that's cosine theta uh, when you express it in polar coordinates. And the reason for picking that is that it's very, that makes it very, very discontinuous at 0, 0. It means that the value of the function doesn't depend on how far you go out. Notice the colors don't depend on the radius here. They just depend on theta, the angle. But it depends dramatically on which direction you go out from the origin, what value you get. Or said another way, as you come into the origin along different lines, you're going to get very, very different values. So. What, we, what we're seeing here is that the most basic way of detecting discontinuity in uh, two dimensions is come in in these different directions and you get different answers. Now here it's super dramatic because if you come in along the positive x-axis, cosine theta is going to be 1. Along the negative axis, cosine theta is going to be negative 1. That's that blue color. So here, even if you come in, even if you just restrict to one straight line through the origin, you get a jump almost no matter what straight line you pick. Now, that's not true if you pick the line right here, because it's all zeros, right, between yellow and green. But most of the straight lines, you get a jump. OK, so that's very, very dramatic. But let's look at something else that's a little more subtle. OK, here, this is another one that's good in polar coordinates. So this is one of Stewart's examples in his textbook, very common example. If you write in Cartesian, it's a little bit weird. x squared minus y squared over x squared plus y squared. Where did that come from? Again, it's easier to d understand in polar. Um, the bottom is r squared now. The top is r squared cosine squared theta minus r squared sine squared theta. So the r squareds cancel out. That's by design. And the top, cosine squared minus sine squared, oh, that's the double angle formula, cosine 2 theta. So again, it's something that just depends on the direction you go out in. Just pick a theta, and that's going to determine the height you go out or in on. Okay, I like to describe this as the bridge, like a railroad bridge here over a river, that's the blue. So the red bridge is up high at, at uh, z equals 1, and the blue river is down here at z equals minus 1. And certainly, if you're coming in along the river or along the bridge, you get dramatically different answers. But in fact, in every direction, depending on the direction you come in, you get these different heights. You can see that very much in the, con in the, the shading, the color plot. You can also see it in the contour plot down here. I've got the contour plot at the bottom. Whenever contours with different values cross each other, that's a bad thing, because it's trying to assign different values to this one point. And it's really a good illustration of the discontinuity of a function. Contour lines of different values should not cross. So here, the, it's discontinuous at the origin. The limit does not exist, because the limit depends on which direction you come in. Here, you could be a little misled here. You could say, oh, if I pick any particular line, 
uh, you know, y equals x or y equals 2x or x equals 3y or something like that, any line that goes to the origin, then that's going to pick out one of these colors. It's going to be continuous on that line. It's going to be continuous on every single line separately. But they all give different answers. That's not continuous. Okay. Um, one interesting thing here, of course, is that uh, going in on straight lines, as I said, is not just not enough. Um, and I don't want to necessarily go into all the sufficient conditions for, for testing continuity. That's not really what, what we're about. But if you come in on a curve, like if you come in on a spiral here, then you're going to go blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. It's never going to settle down to one value. You're going to keep spiraling between being on top of the railroad track and being down in the river valley. Okay. So a curve path, even a relatively simple curve path, like in fact, for example, a parabola or something, would detect that this is um, not continuous. So the main thing here is that you can have some subtleties that it, it looks like it's not the, that bad a function if you restrict to certain kinds of sets. But you want to always see, ask yourself, as I come in in different directions in any kind of random way, as long as I just get closer and closer and closer and closer, even if I wiggle in a strange way, Am I settling down to the same value? And here's an example where it's not settling down. Okay. And in the next uh, part of this video, I'm going to show you an even more funky example, uh, purposely going a little bit beyond what Stuart does, because it's a, it's, it's a neat one to think about, where we look at x to the y.